For this project, I've done a quite a lot of research and planning. I firstly started with production research then proceeded to audience research. Secondary research was the first thing I started with. I went on YouTube and searched stop and search documentary because I wanted to get, I wanted to see what other people have created and try to recreate the same or something like theirs. One that caught my eye was a documentary made by Germany Janus, which is quite similar to my final product. I used quite a few techniques that he impl implemented in his documentary, such as me doing the medium shot whilst, uh, whilst talking to the camera, so the audience attention is, is on me. I also added the portrait videos of my encounters with the police to make the audience understand why the stop and search is affecting a lot of people. Another way I gathered secondary research was was that I searched up on Google stop and search statistics, which gave me a list of how many black, white and Asian people get stopped by the police. And the statistics were quite shocking, as you are most likely to get stopped if you are black, which I made very clear at the start of my documentary. Now for primary research, I had hosted my own focus group where I could gather people's opinions on stop and search. However, the response that I got from the focus group wasn't quite good, as they were being quite shy whilst answering the questions that I had for them. So then I decided to host my own questionnaire where people don't have to reveal their identity, which made my primary research very intriguing, as I got all the information I needed to proceed with my documentary. The planning of my whole documentary was quite easy for my interviews with the victims. I went down to the photography studio and set up the camera and line how I wanted, and took pictures of how it was. When it was shooting day, I then proceeded to set up everything how it was from tripods, camera, lighting and microphones. This made my interview go swiftly as I knew exactly what I needed to do to boost my confidence on shooting day. Another example of this was when I went down to the TV studio and did the exact same thing for the police interview I had. I made sure I set up everything a day before the interview to ensure that I do not mess anything and surprisingly everything went right. But I had a few issues with one of my colleagues standing on the side of the police. However, I quickly fixed that by zooming in. Researching my, researching my audience was a difficult task because I didn't know what my target audience was at the time. However, I came up with a brilliant, brilliant idea to make a questionnaire which wouldn't reveal anyone's identity. The questions were made to find out if about stop and search and if they didn't, then I will tell them more on the documentary. The planning for my documentary was good. I started the production planning and then went over to editing planning for my production. For my production planning, I began with writing shot lists and scripts for each thing. I was recording for, for example, police interviews, interviews with pro professionals and interviews with anyone ha that has been wrongly stopped and searched by the police. I have a few difficulties whilst making the planning, the production. I had a few difficulties while planning the production because I didn't know how I wanted to do it. I was able to overcome this by just going to the studio and setting up the camera, lighting, microphone and tripods how I wanted a day before. For editing planning, it was quite easy because I already knew how to edit, but I had some problems with finding the right fonts, stock footage and editing style. I was able to overcome this with the support of YouTube videos such as how to edit like Iman Gadzi, which helped me a lot through this whole documentary.